Hello all, I'm back again with Living figur Figuratively, continuing my tour of the Eastern Seaboard of Ohio. Um, I drove up a Route 11, which is a very, very long straight road from the Butler up to the Ashtabula Art Center. So it's super easy to get here. It's just a long, boring drive. So hope you have some good tunes for the drive. Um, here I am now at the Ashtabula Art Center for the Paul and Norma Tikkanen Painting Prize, which is the first ever edition of this of this show, and it's an it's an amazing, revolutionary, one of a one of a kind art um, exhibition here in Ohio because it has two twelve thousand dollar best in show prizes. So the competition was fierce, and they made a designation that it's. 50 abstract pieces and 50 realistic pieces. This is this is the legacy left by um, Paul and Norma Tikkanen, who Paul Tikkanen is a painter from the Cleveland area. He's actually a Cleveland Institute of Art grad, which I found out, and he absolutely loved his wife to death. And you know, I, I don't I don't know the history, but he loved his wife a lot, and so the. Um, the the whole the whole show is is basically both of them left you know a lot of money to to get, keep this art show going. They had three judges that they flew in from um, different places, and now I can't remember all their names, but I can certainly put them in the comments. And um, I was thrilled that one of my paintings was accepted. And since I'm right in front of it, I'm going to talk about my painting first. And then I'm going to take you on the tour of the whole rest of the show and show you the prize winners. Uh, my painting is one of my pro-choice pieces. It's called Trust Women. And I'm going to flip it around. Whoa, here we go. They actually put it into a amazing little spot right by the piano. And when I came to the show, to the show opening, I was like, ooh, what does this mean? Does this mean I won something? Maybe, maybe, hopefully, hopefully, maybe. Um, it turns out I did win a honorable mention, which was really, really, really wonderful. And I'm also glad that this painting is here because it is a pro-choice painting in a part of the country that needs pro-choice paintings. This is very much um, uh, more of a conservative um type crowd here and this this painting I've talked about it on various of my other videos um, and I just want to get it out there especially before election time she's looking at the American flag and look how cool they put the American flag behind it too um, she's looking at the American flag with a little bit of sadness and let's hopefully things will things will get better come the election I'm going to keep on going around now. We've got this beautiful piece by Juniper and Manelis. Juniper Manelis, who actually had a solo show here at this gallery space just very, very recently. And it's a cool, it, the Ashtabula Art Center, I'm going to walk and talk a little bit. Um, the Ashtabula Art Center is a theater performing place, but they also have this amazing gallery space. I'm gonna just scoop around, and before I go to the next painting, this next painting that you're gonna see is actually the one that won best in show in the realistic category. It is by, I'm gonna butcher her name, Iwareshi Archer. Maybe I didn't butcher it. Maybe that is how her name is pronounced. Um, it is called Madam. Madam. It is called Madam. <laughs> I knew it was Madam. Um, and it's this day glow, amazing, big day glow, gorgeous figurative piece. Now, one of the things about this show, artists could self identify as realistic or abstract. So she entered this one as a realistic piece. Some people, as you, as you keep on going, you'll see that other pieces that are perhaps even less realistic were entered in the abstract. So it's artists self-identifying. This one right here is by uh, Will Wilson, and he has entered it as an abstract piece, which it is, but it does have elements of realism, porcelain rabbit. 
this piece right here that we're coming up on won second place in the abstract category. And it is by Philip Bunton. It's called Narrow Bends Dividing Us Fall Away. And it's very cool and shiny. This one is by Chris Pico, who is an artist from the area. And I'm gonna give you just a little bit of background why I've, I've never met Chris Pico, but my sister used to work at Pico's Hardware and his family is from Pico's, is the one that owned Pico's Hardware. It's now probably been sold and is, you know, uh, a DIY or a, you know, Ace Hardware. But that's my recollection. I've known about him for years. And here, I'm just going to scoop back because this is a really, it's a very, very cool, very cool painting. And he entered it as an abstract. Now we have Eileen Dorsey, who also entered this much more, I feel, realistic, but maybe the colors, well, in the fall, the colors are realistic too. She entered this beautiful landscape as an abstract. And Eileen Dorsey has the distinction of being voted year after year best artist in Cleveland by Cleveland Magazine. And she's awesome. She does murals all over the place. And she has a studio at uh, 78th Street Studios. And so I'm glad that she's in the show. This one right here, Jack St. John, Touring Test. And this one he entered as an abstract and it is a really stunning abstract. I think I, I think I love it. Then we have over here the Garden of Eden, James Jones, and he entered this as realistic. And so this has a cool conceptiness to it with the snake and the, the clown and the falling to earth, perhaps. Maybe that's what the uh, that's what it's all about. Another beautiful abstract, this one, Rachel Burke, right here. And she did the maximum size allowed. This, this, there were many rules with this painting competition. The maximum size was 48 by 48. So normally when a show is local and I can drive and drop it off, that's where I enter the big ones because I don't have to pay an arm and a leg for shipping. This one is an honorable mention Vessel by Matthew Colo, also get ready for the butchering, Colos J, Colos de G. And this abstract won a uh, honorable mention. Then we have the striped tie, Charles Kish. I'm gonna assume he's Hungarian and pronounce it that way. Um, this one right here, you may remember if you are a living figuratively fan and aficionado, you may remember that this painting by Rebecca Kaler Langley, the Lake Series Number no. 2, appeared in the Ashland University show, Time Will Tell, that I juried with Robert Villa Magna um, for artists 50 and older. And, oh, and now we've got David King, who also, if you are dig back a little bit in living figuratively um, history, I did a whole special on him when he has had his show at the um, at Bay Arts, and I believe it was called Time Traveler. Both of these have the time theme. Then we have, and he entered his, this one he entered as an abstract. And um, most of the pieces in that show I would categorize as realism, but they have elements of abstract to them. Sue Hood gorgeous piece, and I think she's one of the only ones that has a realistic piece in, and also, you'll see later, an abstract piece. Then we have this Beauty of Beauties by Lee Brooklyn. Okay, I have been a super fan of Lee Brooklyn, and I wish that I had met her at the opening. She's the one I showed you um, maybe one or two living figurative Lees ago, where she had a gorgeous piece at the Cleveland State Galleries, which was a Pieta piece with a portrait of Stina Alia and her son in the Pieta position. And this painting won, thankfully, thank goodness, a uh, honorable mention. It's really, really gorgeous. Love it. 
And right below it is one that is, I think is equally gorgeous by Kathy Simone, the woman from Erica Dean. And it just has a beautiful sensitivity to it. That's a gorgeous, gorgeous portrait. And it's, uh, it's unassuming, but very, very, very powerful. So I would have given her an honorable mention too. Um, all right, I'm gonna go up these stairs here. Let's see, we'll go around the corner. Now, here is another honorable mention abstract. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the texture. Acrylic and graphite on a homicide with circular saw excavations. A lot of medium there. Beautiful cityscape, Cleveland cityscape by John Troxell. Inside and Out by Nate Jeffries. And this is also in the realistic category. I love how Nate has, uh, it's got a, like the, 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 double, the double arm, the double image, the, it really, it has, I'm, I'm not gonna say dreamlike quality because that people say that a lot about art that isn't that good, but that one, that one really is very cool. I love it. It's, it's got a memory quality to it, I guess, maybe. I'll say that instead. Then we have Reach by Sharon Dundee, and this one is a gorgeous abstract. And you know what, while we're here, I'm gonna zoom up the wall. This is a painting by Paul Tikkanen himself. He is the sponsor of the show. And the um, Ashtabula Art Center has it hanging up there in a super important spot that's really hard to get to, so I think it'll stay there for quite some time. And it's also 48 by 48, it's the biggest that you can enter. Now we've got the office. Oh, and if you come out, which you can, he is giving away, and Paul Tikkanen has passed away, but there are these, this beautiful stack of his beautiful books, and he's giving them away for free. You can put a little donation in if you feel like you shouldn't take it for free, but you don't have to. And it's a gorgeous book. I grabbed one, and I gave a little donation, of course, especially because I got a little prize money, so I'm happy about that. Let's keep on, keep on looking around. This piece right here, Final Frontier by Shannon Casey in the realistic category, a self-portrait painter painting herself. Then we have Spark, second place in the realistic category. So this is a big graphite piece with all kinds of fun details, fire, the dog, the little scary child. Very cool. Then we have Dana Oldfather's River Scruff. Dana Oldfather is a wonderful Cleveland artist who actually has the distinction of winning an award at the Can Triennial, where she is going to have a show at the Butler, which is where I came from, the Butler Institute of American Art. So I am definitely looking forward to that. That, um, that, is, that is wonderful. This one right here is Sue Hood's abstract piece. You saw her realistic piece. This is her abstract piece. And it does have elements of realism, but it's self-identified as an abstract piece. Then, okay, here we, well, oh, that's the heater there. Um, this piece right here, I love Conglomerate uh, Five with the, by Allison, Allison Steinle. Oh, did I? I, I can't remember whether there's, but anyway, she has um, self-identified as a abstract artist for this piece. And it's the, way more realistic than, the, um, than many of the realist artists who self-identified as, as realists. But it's really quite a gorgeous piece. You know what, I skipped one whole section so I'm gonna, well, I'll keep going here. All right, then we have John Sargent, whose work you've seen in many places. And um, this is a self-portrait. I know him, which is what people say when they recognize a self-portrait on the wall of somebody that they know. And that's really, really, you know, an excellent, excellent painting. He's got a gigantic self-portrait too, which is 
probably still with the um, within the size restrictions, but he decided to do this small one, which is gorgeous. Angelfish by Timothy Callahan. Also beautiful. And now we have first place in the abstract competition. We have Susan Squires, who is an archived artist. And let's just get a load of the texture of this encaustic with oil stick on panel. It's really, it's very cool and must be seen in person. Then we have the overwhelming question, which is one of the pieces that are sold. Joan Brett, realistic oil on board. Beautiful. Ken by Marty Young, also in the realistic category. And now we have George Cosman, who is, um, I took life drawing with him. He, he graduated actually from the Cleveland Institute of Art two years ahead of me. Um, he graduated high school, Cleveland Heights High School, two years ahead of me. And he actually went to the same junior high school that I did, um, Monticello Junior High School. Um, and I took life drawing with him for a bunch of years in my sort of coming back to art phase. And he's a fabulous life drawing-er, but now he focuses mostly on doing these gorgeous mountain, mountain scenes. He also does some innovative stuff with um, computer art where he does, you know, one, one off, not reproductions, but um, one piece generated, you know, like where it's computer, photography, drawing, all put together in an amazing way. I love this mountain, mountain scene. It's really, really gorgeous. Um, and his, okay, so this is a painting show, and he's got acrylic, hand-ground mar maple charcoal and metal leaf. So there is a little bit of acrylic paint in there that makes it worthy or whatever for the, um, for the uh, a painting show, but there's a lot of charcoal. He's really, I consider him more of a drawer um, cause that's, but look how gorgeous that is. That's beautiful. All right. I'm going to go back down cause I skipped over the central section, but you can get an idea of what this whole space looks like. And when we were here for the, uh, opening, it was quite, uh, quite busy. So I couldn't even see everything. All right, here we go. This piece right here, it's called So by Rebecca Stowell. Okay, so, and this is in the realistic category. Hmm. And how cool. It's got front, back. It's a painting, but it's a little bit of a freestanding sculpture painting. Then we have James Miller, Untitled, and this one is in, in the abstract category. Jen Omates, abstract category. And look how 3D that is, even though it's a flat painting. Like when you come around to the side, it pops. This one right here is by, it's called Back in the Day, Paris Mackey. And he has entered it in the abstract category. Even though it's got elements of realism to it. And I would quite readily call this a painting that would be in the realism category. And perhaps the realism category should be called representational instead of realism to really make the distinction so it's harder to self-identify. But, so this one is an, from the abstract category, and then we've got the lake, Rebecca Kaler Langley, in the realistic category. Now, she also had the abstract. She's the other one that has the two pieces. I'm going to zip over real, real quick. Hers is the big blue one um, in the abstract category. And then this is the lake in the realistic category. But I could certainly see entering this one in the abstract category. So it's hard for the artist to self-identify. Now, these two, I think, are both pretty clear cut. This is Wally Kaplan's Tomorrow's Another Day in the realistic category. 
And then down here, we have Anne Dumont's The Attitude, and she certainly does have an attitude in the realistic category. And then we have another sale, which is excellent, by, let's see, who is it? Lisa Valksknoris Lauer, an abstract, and it's quite gorgeous. Usually the pieces that sell in the show are the ones that are the least expensive. And in looking at the prices of the ones that sold, that is the case here. The two least expensive ones have sold. Um, so I'm gonna finish up right here with the best in show in the realistic category, Iwareshi Archers. And I'm gonna flip it around. Here I am, okay, in front of this one. All right, thank you for joining me for Living Figuratively. Come see the um, Paul and Norma Tikkanen painting competition prize uh, at the Ashtabula Art Center from now through October 31st. On the website, their, um, their hours are very, very generous. It's like nine to nine every day. If they're not open Sundays, um, but quite the very generous gallery hours. And pop by because you'll have the place all to yourself and you can actually see all the gorgeous works in this show. Um, and so I'm gonna sign off a little bit, but I will surprise pop up again a little bit later and you'll see where I go next. Ah, I'm gonna finish.